Looks like John's having a bad day. A rogue actor found a way to slip corrupted firmware into the update stream. When John updated the firmware, the bogus code took control and, well, you know the rest. And the crazy thing is John did everything right. He was keeping the firmware and the controllers up to date. He checked the firmware image to make sure it wasn't damaged in transit. And he applied the update in the prescribed way. John went right by the book. But how could he know that the update server itself had been compromised? Since there was no way to independently determine whether the firmware update was authentic, John had no choice but to trust what came out of the repository. And this time, what came out of the repository was crafted to cause a loss of control and to inflict damage. John had no idea that anything was wrong, until it was too late. It doesn't have to be this way. There are strong cryptographic methods that prove the authenticity and integrity of a data file. If these methods had been in place at the plant, John would be calmly chatting with Marcia, instead of scrambling for the emergency cutoff switch. Now, you may think this example is a little over the top, but the truth is, just about every piece of technology with which we come in contact has some kind of embedded firmware. And for most devices, the firmware can be updated, and why not? Updating firmware can fix bugs and add new features to a device, and that adds a lot of value for the consumer. But rogue firmware can leak data and cause device malfunctions, as John has sadly learned. So why aren't cryptographic authentication methods used everywhere firmware can be updated? Well, there are two reasons. First, the math behind cryptographic authentication can be hard. It involves modular arithmetic, Galois fields, elliptic curves, and a dozen other mathematical concepts you just don't encounter every day. And second, the computations involve large numbers, very large numbers, into the hundreds of digits. If your product uses a smaller or slower microcontroller, well, even doing a simple verification can take a long time. So... You're stuck, right? Well, not anymore. The DS28C36 is a tiny device that adds crypto-grade authentication to pretty much anything. Inside this 6-pin, 3-millimeter package are the two elements that are essential for secure authentication. A block that generates a cryptographic hash over a file of any size, and a block that performs the large integer modular math required for verification of cryptographic authentication codes. Here's how it works. First, you compute a new key pair consisting of a public key that you distribute to all your devices and a private key that you keep under tight control. When you create a new file, let's say a new firmware load that you want to authenticate, first you compute a cryptographic hash over the firmware you plan to distribute. Now, a cryptographic hash is a kind of a message digest, but it's extremely resistant to hash collisions, whether caused by bit errors or intentional manipulation by a rogue actor. Next, you use your PC to generate a digital signature using that cryptographic hash and the private signing key. By signing the hash, you've effectively signed the firmware itself, because if any bit of the firmware changes, the hash will also change. Now when you distribute the firmware file, you also distribute the signature. When any of your devices receives the new firmware file, they get the signature as well. The microcontroller in the device stores the new firmware file and then sends it block by block to the DS28C36. The DS28C36 computes the hash across the entire file. And finally, you send the signature to the DS28C36, and using the public verification key, it determines the validity of the firmware using the signature and the hash. If the verification fails, the microcontroller discards the new firmware and generates an alert. But if the verification succeeds, then the microcontroller can begin to use the new firmware. It can be certain that the firmware is authentic and unmodified because it was signed with a private key available only to the developer authorized to sign the firmware. It can trust that the public verification key is authentic because once loaded into the DS28C36 by the manufacturer, the public key is locked and can't be subsequently modified. And it can trust that the firmware didn't change because if the firmware had changed in any way, the cryptographic hash would also have changed 
and the signature verification would have failed. To help demonstrate the ease with which you can incorporate the DS28C36 into your design, Maxim has created an authentication demonstration kit. It's available now from Maxim, and it consists of just two tiny boards. On the right is a USB adapter board. It converts data carried over a standard USB connection to the I2C protocol needed by the DS28C36 authenticator. And on the left is the authenticator board. It has the DS28C36 and a pair of status LEDs, green for pass and red for verification fail. With this kit and a PC, you can see how easy it is to perform firmware verification in your product. Now for this demo, instead of a firmware file, we're going to use a JPEG picture. And to keep processing times reasonable, we'll use a small picture. It's just 10K in size. This is the demo software. It's pretty simple. One button selects the image to process. There's a tab you use for signing the image and another tab you use to verify the image. The demo software already contains a private key and the DS28C36 in the demo kit is already loaded with the corresponding public key. Now when you sign a file, you're using the processing horsepower of your PC. Modern personal computer microprocessors are really fast, and they have all the muscle needed to efficiently perform the large integer math needed for signature generation. But when you verify an image, you generally don't have a PC available. Your IoT device is out on its own. So to verify an image, we send the data file over USB to the DS28C36. The DS28C36 performs the hash on the file and then does the math needed to verify the signature and to validate the file. If the verification succeeds, it sends a message back to the PC and turns on the green LED. And if the verification fails, it sends a message back to the PC and turns on the red LED. First, let's generate a signed image. To do this, just click the Sign Image Valid button. The software takes just a few seconds to scan the image data within the JPEG file, compute the hash, and perform the math needed to generate a signature. When done, the software embeds the signature into one of the EXIF fields within the picture. Now, to verify the image, just click the Verify tab and then the Verify Image button. The software sends the picture block by block to the DS28C36, and when it's done, you'll see the DS28C36 perform some computations for just a fraction of a second, and then report the result. The picture passed, it is valid, and you can be sure that the data you received is exactly the data that was signed, because if anything in the data file had changed, the hash would also have changed, and the verification would have failed. But what if we use an invalid private key? Go back to the Sign tab, select the original image again, but this time click the Sign Image Invalid button. Now once again, the software creates a hash and generates a signature, but since the private key is incorrect, the signature is invalid. Now let's check it to make sure the verification step catches that deception. Click the Verify tab, and then the Verify Image button. As before, you'll see the software send the image to the DS28C36, but when it attempts to verify the file, the DS28C36 detects the fraud. This shows that if an imposter tries to substitute a file with an invalid signature for the genuine article, the deception will be caught. But what if an error in transmission corrupts the file? The signature is still a valid signature for the original file, but the file itself was damaged. Well, to test this scenario, I intentionally modified the signed file by changing just one bit. Do you see it? It's right here. I've changed just one bit in one byte of the file. Let's try to verify this file. As before, the software sends the data over USB to the DS28C36. But once again, the verification fails. Now this tells us something important. The DS28C36 can detect when a file has been presented that is improperly signed, and when a file, whether properly signed or not, has been corrupted in transit. In either case, the prudent action is to discard the file. That's Maxim's Authentication Demonstration Kit, and we'd love for you to check it out for yourself. Just visit the address on your screen for more information. 
And for more about the DS28C36 Authenticator itself, just visit the product page. There you'll find all the data you need to begin using strong authentication technology in your own products. Thanks for watching, and be careful out there.